The time for member statements has concluded. I call the Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I inform the House that the Minister for National Disability Insurance Scheme and Minister for Government Services will be absent from question time uh, for the rest of this week. The Minister for Social Services will answer questions on his behalf. Questions without notice, and I give the call to the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Under this government, Australians are paying on average $8,000 a year in additional costs. People with a mortgage are paying $24,000 a year. They're worse off. Energy costs are up by $1,000, and food prices are up nearly 10 per cent, Prime Minister. Prime Minister, isn't every Australian worse off as a result Order. of your broken promises and bad decisions? Order. Before the Prime Minister, I'll just ask him to pause. Ministers, the Home Affairs Minister, the Treasurer, was far too much noise. I couldn't hear the question, and the Leader of the Opposition will state his question again. I need to hear the question. So that means don't interrupt. I don't need any assistance from the member for Riverina, but appreciate the, the sentiment. Give the call to the Honourable the Leader of the Opposition. Well, with much pleasure, Mr Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. Prime Minister, under your government, Australians are on average $8,000 a year worse off. Order. People with a mortgage are $24,000 a year worse off. Energy costs are up $1,000. And food prices under your watch are nearly 10 per cent higher. Prime Minister, isn't every Australian worse off as a result of your broken promises and bad, bad decisions? Yeah. Give the call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. I, I thought I was going to get a question about our cost of living tax cuts. Uh, but we got a much but, but I got a much more general invitation Order. into the difference that this government has made. Mr Speaker, when we came to office, inflation peaked as a quarter in March 2022 at 2.1 2 per cent in one quarter. The latest annual inflation figure, of course, is 4.1 per cent. 4.1 per cent. And one of the reasons why that has occurred is by Order. producing the first budget surplus in 15 years, turning a $78 billion deficit into a $22 billion surplus. And of course, when it comes to cost of living, wages matter. Wages matter. Outside of the pandemic, the biggest drop in real wages this century occurred in guess which quarter? March 2022, down 1.4 per cent in one quarter. Now we have the fastest wage growth Order. in 15 years, with real wages rising for two consecutive quarters. Two quarters in a row, Jim. Two quarters in a row. We're down three and a half per cent. On job jobs, we inherited a sluggish labour market. Employment growth has doubled with around 650,000 jobs created on our watch and a record number of women in jobs and working full-time. Productivity growth on our predecessors was the worst in 40 years. Productivity rose in the September quarter by 0.9 per cent. In construction, it was 4.4 per cent. Business investment declined under them for the lowest level since the early 2000s, business investment has grown in every quarter under Labor, up 12 per cent in real terms. And of, course, and of course, under them, they had tax policy that would have seen Australians, who are the lowest paid, get not a single dollar. Not a single dollar. Order. Now, Order. every Australian will get a tax cut. Every Australian. 84 per cent of them will get a higher tax cut under us. And if they really thought their system was better, they'd be voting against it and promising to roll it back. Unless they do that. Unless they do that. And who Order. knows? They change their position every day. <laughs> It's still possible. Time. It's still possible. Time has now they're voting for it. 
The Prime Minister's, the Prime Minister's time has concluded. The member for Page. When the House comes to order, the member for Page, the leader of the Nationals, and the member for Hume were making too much noise during that answer. And we'll hear from the member for Solomon. Thanks, Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Deputy Prime Minister. How will Labor's new tax cuts provide cost of living relief to members of the Australian Defence Force, to public servants in the Department of Defence, and also to workers in our great Australian defence industries? Call to order. Member for, member for Fisher hadn't even called the Deputy Prime Minister and you were interjecting. So that's a warning for everyone else in the chamber not to interject before a minister answers or when a question is being asked. I give the call to the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Defence. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I thank the member for his question and acknowledge the his service Barker. and his commitment to Australia's Defence Force and his tireless advocacy on behalf of Australia's defence families. Every member of the Australian Defence Force, every public servant in the Department of Defence, every Order. person working in Australia's defence industry will receive a tax cut under Labor's tax plan. And what that means is that those people who are serving our nation through their involvement in Australia's defence establishment will now be able to take home more of what they earn through a tax cut, which is deeply deserved. For example, an Air Force sergeant working at RAF Base Amberley on Australia's Super Hornets will now have a tax cut of more than $2,400. A sub-lieutenant doing anti-warfare training at HMAS Watson in Sydney will have a tax Order cut of more than $2,000. In the member's yeah. own electorate, a captain in one brigade at Darwin <laughs> will have a tax cut of $2,880. And here, a defence civilian working at Defence's call centre at Cooma, not so far from here, will receive a tax cut of $1,463, which is more than twice the tax cut that person would have received under the policy of those opposite. Yeah. Now, since coming to power, we've been completely focused on cost of living pressures, which have been persistent. But Order. the most important step that we can take is to land, fight on behalf of Australia's working families for a tax cut. Now, clearly, the Prime Minister has taken a difficult decision in bringing forward this tax package with the Treasurer and the Finance Minister. But for all that is said by those opposite, if we judge them by what they do and not by what they say, it is clear that they agree the Prime Minister has made the right call. Because if they didn't, the only honest and credible position they could take would be to oppose this legislation and this in this Order. parliament and do what the Deputy Leader of the Opposition said, and that is roll this package back. <laughs> The Liberals in power were a high taxing government. Order. Deputy Prime Minister will resume his seat. I'll hear from the member for Canning. Just relevance, Speaker. That was, that was a dixer in the purest sense. There was no reference at all to the opposition. It was, uh, it was a question. How, tell us how good you are. That was... the, the, no, I'll, I'll, deal, I'll deal with. Order. I'll deal with the point of order. Order. Members on my right will cease interjecting immediately. The Treasurer will cease interjecting. Order. Members on my right will cease interjecting. Will be warned. The Deputy Prime Minister was not asked about alternative approaches. He was not asked about order. Order. He was asked. Order. He was asked about tax policy, and he was not asked about the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. I bring him back to the question. Now evidently a shell of an opposition, but the government, Order. which is actually delivering real tax relief for Australians, which has delivered a budget surplus, which is supporting Australia's defence force and our national security, that government is the Albanese Labor government. Yeah. 
Order. The member for Page is warned. I don't know how many times I've got to tell you. I want to hear from the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. My question is to the Prime Minister. Before the election, the Prime Minister promised a $275 reduction in energy prices. No changes to super taxes, no changes to franking credits, cheaper mortgages and no changes to bipartisan tax policy. The Prime Minister has broken every one of these promises. The Prime Minister claimed his word is his bond. Isn't it now clear, Prime Minister, Australians cannot trust a word you say? Give a call. Order. Order. Members on my right will cease and ejecting. The Minister for Home Affairs will cease and ejecting. The member for Barker will join the minister in not interjecting. Whoever made that comment will cease. The deputy was heard in silence. The Prime Minister will be given the same courtesy, and he has the call. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. I'm asked by the deputy leader of the opposition, of all people, about tax policy and about consistency. Tax policy and consistency. The person who stood up, stood up before we'd even announced our new tax policy and said, we will fight this legislation in the parliament. We don't even know what it will look like. You know, we'll fight them on the beaches. It was Churchillian, Mr Speaker. Churchillian. They'll fight, they'll fight it on the beaches Order. until the tide changes. <laughs> and then their commitments just get washed away in a week. Washed away, Mr Speaker. He then went... Order. He said... She said... When this legislation hits the parliament, we will fight it. We will fight it all the way. I'm digging in, along with my colleagues and our leader, Peter Dutton, to fight this... Fight this fight. They weren't just fighting it. They were fighting this fight. Really, really hard. Not just hard. Really, really hard. Order. The Prime Minister will pause. The Minister for the Environment will cease objecting so I can hear from the manager on a point of order. Mr Speaker, the question is, was about a promised $275 reduction in energy prices, promised no right. change to super right. taxes. Resume your seat. No cha Resu res resume your seat. Resume your seat. The, 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 well, just remind the manager, who should know of all people, when you get the call on that second day back, you've got to state the point of order. Now, obviously that was about relevance and he was getting to that point. But you simply can't get up, restate the question. You'll get the call, just simply state the point of order, and you can make your point. If that happens again, people will not get the call. I'm not having question time like that. The Prime Minister was asked a fairly broad question, and I'm just going to ask him to return to the question. He's entitled to make some commentary or quotes, but I, don't, I can't hear what he's saying. So if everyone could just not make as much noise, question time will go a lot smoother. I was asked about tax policy and about consistency. And uh, the Leader of the Opposition, of course, was asked on the Today Show, did we walk away from the principles of Stage 3? Absolutely not. The Deputy Leader was asked, will you roll back whatever changes are made? Well, this is our position. This is absolutely our position. Absolutely. Order. The same figures Order. that I use, the same term Order. I use when supporting working Australians getting a dollar, a dollar an hour increase. But today, of course, we have a different position again, because in spite of the fact they were really, really going to fight it, and they were going to fight this fight, what we saw yesterday was a different position again. So the deputy leader was asked how they were going to pay for new changes. And she said this about, uh, you wouldn't expect me to pull out one ingredient or one part of tax reform, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to play the yes, this is good, no, this is bad, the rule in, rule out, I'm not going to do that. 
actually said that. Actually Order. said that. And what we know, Order. what we know from Senator Hume, because it pays to look at their shadow ministry, she said this. We the know that Labor did not Barker cause the war warned. in Ukraine, which was, has fed high energy prices. We know they didn't cause COVID, which induced the supply problems that we see right around the world. The things that cause inflation are not of Labor's making. That's what Senator Hume said. She then went on to say the Australian people look to their government to help them through a crisis. Order. That is what we are doing through our tax changes. Concluded. Just reminding the House, we have the members for Page, Barker and Fisher on warnings. I'll give the call to the honourable member for Reid. My question is to the Prime Minister. How are Australians responding to Labor's plans to give every taxpayer a tax cut? Call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. Well, Australians have responded very positively to the government's determination to make a difference for low and middle income workers for uh, who need Deacon. support, further support with cost of living pressures. And that is what the government has done. We have a tax package that provides taxpayer relief for every single Australian taxpayer. All 13.6 million of them, not just some, not just some, every one of them, including those who earn up to $45,000 a year. But we know as well that overwhelmingly uh, Middle Australia are the big beneficiaries of our tax package. And on the Sunrise program, Leanne Andrews, uh, a working mum from Toowoomba in the electorate of Groom, said this, we will save money. When the original decision about stage three was made, it was a very different climate. So I do think it is fair to share it across the middle income and low income earners. Tony from Bunya in the electorate of Dixon said this, we totally support your tax changes. Thank you for being strong enough to make this decision. Lynette of Glenorchy in Tasmania. Thank you for the tax cuts. Order. It will make a huge difference to the average Australian. Please tell the opposition to take a good look at how the average person lives. Robin Order. of Wynnum West in Bonner. On I want to thank left. you for redesigning the tax cuts. It was absolutely the right thing to do. It shows fairness to Australia helps people struggling financially. Thank you so much for standing up for what is right and fair. Joan Order. from Cunningham. While I will not receive any tax cuts myself as I am retired, I am grateful that we now have people in government who are genuinely concerned for those in our society who do it tough. Order. Mr Speaker, these tax cuts are aimed squarely Order. at Members middle on my Australia, left will cease yeah. providing support for those hard-working Australians who need, who need this support, but also making sure that people aren't left behind, like under the previous system, making sure that every single Australian gets a tax cut. 84 per cent of Australians will get more than they were going to get. 90 per cent of women will get more than what they were going to get. 98 per cent of young people between the ages of 18 and 24 will get more than what they were going to get. This is good policy Order. done for the, the right reasons. Has Before I call the Leader of the Australian Greens, I'm pleased to inform the House that present in the gallery today is a group of international journalists who are visiting as part of the upcoming ASEAN Australian Special Summit. On behalf of the House, a warm welcome to you all. Give the call to the Leader of the Australian Greens. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Under Labor's housing and rental crisis, average rents have gone up nearly $100 a week and mortgages nearly $200, while Labor spends billions of dollars a year pushing house prices out of reach of first home buyers with tax handouts that overwhelmingly benefit the wealthy. You've said Labor has changed on tax cuts because of economic pressures, so will you now also axe unfair negative gearing and capital gains tax handouts to help fix Labor's housing crisis, or do people have to win a lottery to get a home under Labor's plan? Order. 
Order. Members on my left will cease interjecting. The member for Mitchell will cease interjecting. I don't say that very often. Um, I give the call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. And I thank oh, no. the member for Melbourne for his question, which goes to Labor's position on housing. And we have consistently said, including uh, to, to the Greens political party, that the key to the solution for housing in this country is housing supply. And that is why our measures have been comprehensive and across the board. When it comes to uh, tax changes, we made tax changes in the budget for our build to rent scheme that will result in between 150 and 250,000 additional private sector dwellings being built. In addition to that, of course, we have our considerable support for social housing. Our social housing accelerator we announced and delivered to states and territories uh, last June of $2 billion that's already resulted in $500 million of investment in the honourable member's uh, home state of Victoria, including substantial refurbishment of public housing that was dilapidated and falling apart and unoccupied in sections of Order. the member's own electorate. We have been prepared to take this strong action, which is so important. In addition to that, in addition to that we have our housing agreements uh, with state and territory governments that will see a target of 1.2 million Order. homes being Deacon. built over the next decade, including with an incentive scheme like the old national competition payment scheme to encourage higher and medium density housing where appropriate in Order. our urban communities. Deputy Leader and of the Opposition will cease interjecting. The Greens political party councillors at my local council, as I do, supporting higher density in areas such as along Parramatta Road in Sydney. Because that is how, that is how you fix it. Higher densities around transport corridors, around areas like Parramatta Road in Sydney that's been dilapidated, that's been uh, subject to increased crime because there simply, uh, simply isn't uh, people around those communities at night. I look forward to. I'd be shocked if if Greens councillors actually vote for medium density or affordable housing. But I look forward to it. They're the sort of measures that we want in place to make a big difference. And I also look forward to the Green senators and members voting for our help to buy scheme, which will include. In, to provide the an incentive is for people to be able to get into private home ownership, which the member says Order. is his objective. The Prime Minister's time has concluded, and as a result of continual interjections on a warning, the member for Fisher will leave the chamber. Give the call to the honourable member for Gilmore. My question is to the Treasurer. How will the Albanese Labor government's tax cuts provide cost of living relief for middle Australia and what are the alternatives? The call to the Treasurer. Thanks, Mr Speaker, and thanks to the terrific member for Gilmore for her question. 64,000 taxpayers in Gilmore will get a tax cut. 87 per cent of them will get a bigger tax cut than before. Mr Speaker, the last couple of weeks make two things really Order. clear. From this Prime Minister, Middle Australia gets a bigger tax cut. From that opposition leader, all they get is the usual slapstick negativity, Mr Speaker. Our tax cuts are all about providing more relief for more people to help with the cost of living. Every taxpayer gets a tax cut, 84 per cent of them get a bigger tax cut. 90 per cent of taxpaying women, 90 per cent of taxpayers under 35. 90 per cent of taxpayers in the regions will all get a bigger tax cut, Mr Speaker. Now, those opposites spent Order. the best part of a couple of weeks lurching and searching for an excuse to dud those workers. They called for an election. They equated bigger tax cuts with Marxism. They said they'd fight us every step of the way, Mr Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition wanted to boycott Woolies and then he wanted to boycott Middle Australia as well. But after all their posturing and all their politic and puffing themselves up, 
Up goes the little white flag, Mr. Speaker. Up went the white flag. If they really Member believe the changes we are making are wrong, they'd vote against them and they'd roll them back as the Deputy Leader said they would. Instead, to justify this humiliating capitulation, they say they're going to resurrect the old stage three tax cuts. The best they can come up with in Order. 2024 is to try and breathe life into the member for Cook's tax policy from five years ago. And Mr Speaker, there is a theme here. Last week, the shadow treasurer accused me of having no plan to take this country back to what it was like during the Morrison government. I want to make it clear to the House that I took this as a compliment, Mr Speaker, because when the rest of Australia watches that nemesis documentary on the ABC, they see a cautionary tale. But when the member for Hume settles down in his PJs with a little hot chockey and an old back and black mug to watch that documentary, he sees some kind of golden era, Mr Speaker. Order. Order. Members on my me, order, members on my right. The member for Spence will cease dejecting. Members on my right will cease dejecting immediately. So I can hear from the manager of opposition business. Mr. Speaker, on relevance, the treasurer is a serial offender, and he's at it again. He ought to he ought to desist in the grubby personal attacks and stick to the question. The order. Just want to. The treasurer will cease injecting, and I'll hear from the the deputy leader of the opposition. I'm trying to deal with the manager's point of order. The leader of the house on the point of order. Yeah, on, on the point of order. In terms of language that's allowed to be used in answers to questions, uh, the precedents are clear. I did a I did a search of the previous government. The word thug was used 15 times in question time by one particular minister who is now leader of the opposition. These comments are clearly order, in order. Resume, resume, resume your seat. No, I'll deal, with the, I'll deal with this order. I'll deal with this matter. Members on my right will cease interjecting. The Treasurer will resume his seat. The, treasurer, the Minister for Home Affairs has been continually interjecting during question time. She is warned. If she interjects one more time, she will not be here in the chamber. Order. The treasurer was asked about alternative, about alternatives, not alternative personalities or people. So I'm going to ask him to return back to the question, and he can refer to alternative policies, not alternative personalities. He has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The alternative on their watch was higher inflation in a quarterly sense, wages were lower, and waste and rorts were feeding huge deficits in the budget and the tax cuts were skewed to people already on the highest incomes. And the point I'm making, Mr Speaker, is that they haven't learned and they haven't changed. If anything, they're more divided and more divisive than they've ever been. And that's why I say to the people of Australia watching that documentary on the ABC, if you thought the Abbott and Turnbull and Morrison governments in the Nemesis doco were bad, we now know from this tax debacle on that side of the House that the dregs of those governments are even worse. Order. There's far too much noise in the House. I want to hear from the member for Hume. My question is to the Prime Minister. On the 11th of December last year, Treasury was instructed to undertake work that included changes to the stage three tax cuts. After that date, the Prime Minister and the Treasurer then repeated 12 times they hadn't changed their position on the stage three tax cuts. Indeed, the Prime Minister said we're not reconsidering that position. Prime Minister, after repeatedly misleading Australians, how can anyone trust you or your government? Give a call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. Um, the Shadow Treasurer, I assume, knows uh, that he's completely wrong in his assessment of what uh, the Treasury official said occurred on the 11th of December. She made it very clear. Order. She made it very clear that she, as a good public servant, uh, that Treasury uh, initiated initiated that work. Uh, we we may have made uh, no apologies, though, Order. for the fact that members I, on my left will cease interjecting. On the 7:30 on the, the 7:30 report on the 21st of December. And in the 3rd of January, 
and on other occasions said we were working on ways in which we could provide further support for low and middle income Australians. That's, that's what we do. That's what we do. And we've been doing that through a range of measures since we came to office because of one, the Order. pressures people were under, but two, the mess that we inherited. Yeah. So we had a range of measures that we have rolled out: cheaper childcare, cheaper medicines, our energy price relief plan, our fee-free TAFE plan. All of these measures are Order. in place. Uh, what, what we did, and this would be unrecognisable to those opposite, is Order, we run a Casey. proper cabinet government. Yeah. So we had received Treasury advice on the weekend prior to the ERC uh, meeting held on the Monday of two weeks ago. We then had Cabinet on Tuesday, and that is where and we changed Hume our position detecting. as a proper Cabinet government. Now, I'm just the Prime Minister. Order. I'm not also the Treasurer or the Health Minister or the Industry Minister or the Energy Minister. We don't have a cabinet committee of one. What we have is proper processes, an ERC, a cabinet, then a ministry, and then we have, and then Order. we have, on my left. then we had a proper caucus process as well. And our united proper processes that we go through is stands in stark contrast with what we've seen in Nemesis. Stark contrast with a mob who hate each other, left. who had completely dysfunctional Order. relationships, and they're all still there. They're all still there. They're all appearing one by one. And I look forward to next, next Monday night. Order. The place. Prime Minister will pause. Has the Prime Minister hang, order? Has the Prime Minister concluded his answer? Has the Prime Minister concluded? The Manager of Opposition Business on a Point of Order. Again on relevance, Mr Speaker. Uh, the, the policy parameters of this question are very tight and he needs to stick to the substance of the question. For the last nine seconds, I'll just ask the Prime Minister to be relevant to the question. Much. The member for Bradford, of course, is under a pre-selection siege, <laughs> as is the member for Lindsay. They're enemies. Order. If you want to see Order. your enemies, don't look over here, look the Prime behind Minister you. Resume his seat. Order. The member for Hume will cease dejecting. The member for O'Connor will cease whatever he's doing as well. The member for Hunter has the call. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Local Government. How are the Albanese Labor government's tax cuts helping with the cost of living for regional Australians? Give the, call, give the call to the Minister for Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development and Local Government. Can I thank very much the member for Hunter for his question. Uh, as a regional Australian, he knows just how important these tax cuts are for those of us who live in the regions. And in fact, as the Treasurer just mentioned, 90% uh, of regional taxpayers will be getting a bigger tax cut under the Albanese Labor government's tax plan. And that is a very good thing. Of course, on 1 July, we will be delivering a tax cut for every Australian taxpayer to help with the cost of living, and this will significantly benefit those who live in the regions. And in fact, in the Hunter, 73,000 taxpayers will receive an average tax cut of over $1,500. My colleagues and I, who live in the regions, we love them, and in remote Australia, we have been listening to what our communities have been telling us about the cost of living, and we recognise that people are doing it tough. But we're responding to that pressure by delivering a bigger tax cut for Middle Australia to help with that cost of living pressure, and Australians are here and now. Our approach will overwhelmingly support those in the regions. Uh, under this government, with our tax plan, regional Australians will keep more of what they earn. 86 per cent of taxpayers in western New South Wales and the Hunter will get a bigger tax cut yeah. under Labor's plan starting on July 1. Yeah. 87 per cent Order. of taxpayers in far north Queensland and regional Victoria will get a bigger tax cut yeah. under Labor's plan. 
a person on an average income of $73,000 will get a tax cut of over $1,504, $804 more than they would have got uh, going to receive Member under the Petrie Liberals and the Nationals warm. Party plan. A person earning $40,000 will get a tax cut Order. of $654. The minister will pause. The minister will pause. The member for Petrie think, can leave the chamber, as he knows when you're on a warning, that is definitely not the time to start interjecting. The minister has the call and will be heard in silence. Thank you very much, Speaker. And as I was saying, uh, those uh, earning 40,000 will get a tax cut of $654, frankly, compared to absolutely nothing under the Liberals and Nationals. These vitally important nurses, teachers, retail assistants, including those important workers who work in Woolworths, uh, that the Leader of the Opposition so uh, rightly wanted to somehow say uh, should be boycotted and therefore lose their jobs. Our labourers, our truckies, Order. our agriculture workers Order. that live in regional Australia, who are some of the most likely uh, to benefit from that. We recognise the contribution of our workers to our nation and to their communities, providing our food, getting our goods to market, uh, get our goods to our doors, supporting a good quality life in our regions and increasing the availability of affordable housing. We know that in Gippsland, 61,000 taxpayers will get a tax cut, including 86 per cent who will be getting a bigger tax cut. New England, 62,000 taxpayers getting a tax cut, including 82 per cent getting a higher tax cut. In Leichhardt, 79,000 taxpayers getting a tax cut, 87 per cent getting a bigger tax cut. These tax cuts are good Order. for regional Australians, and it's only a Labor government that's delivering the them. time has concluded. A call to the honourable member for Menzies. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. On Monday evening on ABC 7.30, the Treasurer confirmed the timing of the government's decision to break its promise on stage three was purely political. And quote, we didn't want to wait, frankly, until after the Dunkley by-election. The Prime Minister Order. claimed his word is his bond. Isn't it now clear Australians can't trust a word he says? Order. Order. Members on my left. The Treasurer will cease interjecting and the member for Wannan will cease interjecting. The member for Hume will cease interjecting. The Prime Minister has the call. Be heard in silence. I can confirm to the member for Menzies I was, was watching the ABC on Monday night. <laughs> And they all were too, Mr. Speaker. Order. They were all watching it. They were all watching it one by one because most of them were on it. <laughs> most of them were on it in a competition of who could show the most, most hatred for their colleagues. <laughs> it was just extraordinary, Mr. Speaker. One after the other, all out there using all sorts of colourful language, all sorts Order. of colourful language about each other, Mr Speaker. And I'm asked about, uh, about tax policy and what people think about tax policy as well. Well, Order. Th those opposite have described it, our policy to give tax cuts to every Australian in the following terms. An egregious error, a betrayal, treachery, trickery, absolutely shameful, class warfare, war on aspiration, lifetime tax on aspiration, divisive, regressive, morally bankrupt, handful of dollars, inflationary, a big tax grab, Marxist economics. It was going to obliterate opportunity, crush confidence and undermine the strength of the economy. They said all that before they declared they were going to vote for it. <laughs> I mean, you Order. can't be taken seriously Unless you the say, for Casey you say is that warned. the decision that this government has made is wrong, and therefore the original position should have remained in place. If you do that, you will vote against, vote against this legislation, and you will commit, as the deputy leader of the opposition did, to roll it back. Unless you do that, you're not fair, Nickham. It's all about politics. It's all just wind. All just wind. 
because we on this side of the House recognised that when economic circumstances change, we're in a position as as Senator Hume, Order. as Senator Hume called up, called upon us to do, to help them through, to help people through, as Senator Hume said, that is precisely what we have done in a way that will also, as the Reserve Bank Governor confirmed yesterday, be consistent with the need to continue to put that pressure on on inflation to continue to see it go down as we have been doing. We, we have undertaken this measure because it was the right decision done for the right reasons at the right time. I give a call to the honourable member for Bennelong. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Early Childhood Education. How will the Albanese Labor government's tax cuts help workers in female-dominated industries like the highly skilled early childhood education sector? Thank give you. a call to the Minister for Early Childhood Education and Minister for Youth. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I do thank the member for Ben Along, who continues to make such a valued contribution in this place that I'm sure the people of Ben Along uh, appreciate. And the 92,000 taxpayers in Benelong also appreciate the Albanese government's tax cuts, which will see them get an average of $1,782 in tax cuts with the Labor government's plan. Now, Mr Speaker, hardworking Australians are under pressure right now, and that's why we're delivering tax cuts for every Australian to help with the cost of living and alleviate some of that pressure. Labor's tax cuts come on top of billions of dollars in cost of living relief, including our cheaper childcare reforms, which the recent ACCC review confirms that it decreased out-of-pocket expenses by, on average, 11 per cent. And our tax cuts are good for middle Australia, they're good for women and they're good for the economy. They are what the Treasurer calls a better way. A better way that sees working women in Australia get, on average, a tax cut of $1,649 a year. A better way that sees hard-working early childhood educators get a, a tax cut, on average, for an early childhood educator on $46,000 a year, getting a tax cut of $829. Yeah. Now, under the previous plan, how much do you think an early childhood educator got in a tax cut? Order. Zero. Zero. Not a dollar, not a cent. Not a dollar, not a cent. And under Labor's plan, an early childhood teacher who earns $69,000 a year will receive an additional $1,404 as a tax cut. And how much do you think Order. an early childhood teacher got under the previous plan. Nothing. Not a dollar, Order. not a Member cent. England. From zero to over $1,000 of tax cuts for early childhood educators and early childhood teachers Order. under Labor's better way, under Labor's plan. Now, last week I had the opportunity to meet some of those hard-working early childhood educators. Caro, who had been in the industry for 45 years, and to Neil, who is only just starting out in her career. And those two early childhood educators, one who had spent decades devoting her life to early childhood education, and one who had chosen to start her career as an early childhood educator, told me what these tax cuts mean for them. It means food on the table, it means petrol in their car, it means paying their car insurance. I don't Order. want to take that away Minister's from them. Time has and I challenge concluded. those opposite. Call to the honourable member for Flynn. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. Farming families and small businesses rely on family trusts to manage their assets. Will the Prime Minister rule out any changes to family trusts, or will this just be another broken promise to regional Australians? Order. Members on my right will cease interjecting. Order. Members on my right and left will cease rejecting. The Prime Minister has begun his answer. The Prime Minister has the call. Thanks very much, Mr Speaker. I, I, I thank the member for his question. 
uh, but perhaps he should have saved it for uh, the joint party room, uh, because uh, the deputy leader of the opposition, because the, the Nats don't get that position for reasons I'm not, I, I don't quite understand. I don't quite understand. He's very loyal to the National Party as the leader of the Order. National Party. That's true. But she said this today on the Today Show. She said, uh, I'm not going to play the yes, this is good, no, this is bad, the rule in, rule out. I'm not going to do that. Order. So the perhaps, member for um, Herbert will leave the chamber under 94A. We have made it very clear uh, of what our tax policy is. I did it at the building down the road there. It's called the National Press Club. I did it clearly, put forward a clear policy plan that those opposite, including Order. the member who asked the question, I assume is voting for. I'm not sure, but I assume he's voting for Order. Uh, our legislation that was moved by the Treasury yesterday. That's our tax policy. That's what we've put forward. That's what. Uh, we are legislating uh, here, and that's what those opposite, who spent so much time, so much time uh, saying they were going to fight it, they were going to roll it back, are now saying they will vote for. Call order, we'll order the member for the member for Hume. Member for Hume is now warned, so that means no more interjections. Otherwise, we we'll repeat of yesterday. Yeah, you got it. Hopefully. I'll give the call to the member for Cunningham. Thank you, Speaker. My question is the minister, to the Minister for Aged Care. What is the Albanese Labor government doing to ensure that our dedicated and hard-working aged care workers can earn more and keep more of what they earn? Give the call to the Minister for Aged Care and Sport. I thank the member for Cunningham for her question and for her relentless advocacy to lift the standard of aged care in her community. The Albanese government knows that strong sustainable wage growth is a solution to cost of living challenges, not part of the problem. And that is why, unlike the opposition, we backed aged care workers in their submission to the Fair Work Commission for a pay rise. And unlike the opposition, we then delivered on that promise. We delivered a 15 per cent increase to the award wage minimums for 250,000 aged care workers across Australia, an $11.3 billion commitment. And under the Albanese government, registered nurses are now taking home an additional $196 a week, or more than $10,000 a year. Personal care workers are now taking home an additional $141 a week, or $7,000 $300 a year. Wow. And that pay rise is changing lives. Mm. Sarah, a personal, assistant, a personal nursing assistant working in the member for Pierce's electorate, told us that her pay rise means that she has been able to save more money for her future. And this investment in aged care workers is paying off because we are now seeing the quality of aged care in Australia improving. Mr Speaker, under the Albanese government, older people are now receiving an additional 2.16 million minutes of care per day. Wow. An additional 2.16 million minutes of care per day. There has been a reduction in the number of pressure injuries. There has been a reduction in the number of physical restraints. There has been a reduction in significant unplanned weight loss. There has been a reduction in falls. There has been a reduction in polypharmacy. And there has been a reduction in the use of antipsychotics in aged care. We are also seeing improvements in the star ratings data with fewer one and two star rated aged care facilities and more four and five star rated aged care facilities. And we are recognising, Mr Speaker, the sharp economic realities of 2024, and that is that household budgets are tight. And that is why, from 1 July, the Albanese government will deliver a tax cut for every single Australian taxpayer so that every taxpayer, including our aged care workers, can earn more and keep more of what they earn. Mr Speaker, 97 per cent of aged care workers will get a bigger tax cut under this scheme. Aged care workers are overwhelmingly women and they are overwhelmingly better off under this regime. So not only can a registered nurse working in aged care now take home an additional $10,000 a year under the Albanese government, they will now also get a tax cut of $1,679 from 1 July, thanks to Labor's tax cuts, almost double what they would have gotten 
and, uh, from the coalition. Australian taxpayers don't want the coalition's cost of living Order. confusion. Ministers they want more reform of aged care. Concluded. Yeah. Give the call to the honourable member for Kuyong. Thank you, uh, Speaker. To, my question is to the Attorney General. In 2015, you said to the then Attorney General, Australia has the right to know what the government is doing, what senior ministers are doing with their time, who they're meeting with, and who they're being lobbied by. I agree. So, is the government open to supporting my Clean Up Politics Act, which would require the mandatory publication of ministerial diaries? The call to the Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for Kuyong for her question. I do recognise the member's advocacy for more transparency in government, and after nine years of Liberal government, more transparency has been desperately needed. The Albanese government is committed to upholding a high standard of integrity, transparency and accountability, a standard that the former government never aspired to, let alone achieved. Order. Never for Within right. months of coming to office, we have established the National Anti-Corruption Commission, the single biggest reform to the Commonwealth integrity framework in decades. The Prime Minister and this government have exposed the shame of the former Prime Minister's secret ministries. That is the secrecy, of course, that the former government sunk to. It is an episode that damaged good government damaged the parliament, Order. damaged our the democracy. The Attorney General will pause so I can hear from the member for Kuyong on a point of order. Point of order, Mr Speaker, on relevance. The Attorney General was not asked about the former government. There was not alternative approaches. He was asked quite a specific question. He's had a preamble and I'm going to invite him to return back to the member's question to make sure he is directly relevant. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Commonwealth's lobbying code of conduct, which is a transparency measure, of course, was established by the last Labor government. For the first time, lobbyists were required to register their activity and comply with strict rules on transparency. Labor created the lobbying code, uh, and it's worth saying, by way of contrast, that the former Labor government, the Liberal government, tried to privatise the visa system by handing it to its lobbyist mates. The current freedom of information regime is a legacy of the last Labor government. Labor abolished conclusive certificates. Labor created a commissioner model, three commissioners of an information commissioner, a privacy commissioner Order. and a freedom of information commissioner, for a no-cost review of FOI decisions. The former Liberal government regrettably smashed that model, trying to repeal the legislation oh, no, and the, then defunding the, the office. Will pause. The Attorney General was pretty clear in my earlier remarks. You weren't asked about the former government. There was no compare and contrast. I'm going to ask you to stick to the question, otherwise you'll resume your seat. Thank you, Mr. I, I recognise the call by the member for Kuyong for automatic access to ministerial diaries. Such access to diaries would be alien to the Commonwealth's Freedom of Information system, which does not provide for the automatic publication of any category of document. Access to official documents of government is available under the Freedom of Information Act by request. Each request is subject to assessment, which is Order. governed Member by statutory requirements. It's governed by a series of exemptions, each of which need to be considered. Decisions are subject to review by the Information Commissioner and, if necessary, by the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. That's just how our system works, and I thank the member for her question. The call to the honourable member for Macon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Skills and Training. How is the Albanese Labor government making it easier for Australians to undertake education and training and keep more of what they earn? Yeah, yeah, good question. Give a call to the Minister for Skills and Training. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Can I thank the member for Macon for his question and his strong advocacy for the vet sector in his electorate and across the country? Uh, speaker, in response to the worst skills shortage in 50 years, this government responded quickly by initiating uh, programs like fee-free TAFE 
and indeed struck the first national skills agreement with state and territory governments in a decade, which will deliver the reforms that are required to supply the skills to a much needed, rapidly changing modern economy. And last year, we smashed our 180,000 fee-free TAFE target by ensuring that 300,000 Australians are enrolled in courses, ensuring that they are acquiring skills in demand for our economy, for businesses and for workers. And indeed, the National Skills Agreement will Order. see the, the creation of centres of, of excellence bringing together TAFEs and universities to ensure that they collaborate so they supply the skills that are very much needed. Speaker, as a result of the great success and uptake uh, of uh, fee-free TAFE, we've made a, a, we're making available a further 300,000 places starting this year. And like any good policy, uh, it achieves more than one goal. Not only does it encourage students to enrol in courses in areas of demand, but it provides real cost of living relief for students doing it tough, in some cases amounting to more than $10,000 a year for courses. But this government's, government's plans do not stop there for these students, because we are providing a tax cut for all Australians. And that means hundreds of thousands of these students that are working part-time will receive a tax cut as a result of this government's tax plan. And, if, and for that reason, we should be ensuring that this passes. And it's quite true that if the, those opposite were in government now, none of these students would be receiving any relief under, a tax, uh, under the tax plan of this government, because we know they would not be changing their position. We know that they do not, in their heart of hearts, support Order. this proposal. They are totally opposed in their heart of hearts to this proposal. They would like to see these students miss out on tax cuts that, are, that we're providing as a result of this, uh, this policy. Speaker, we need to ensure, in, in as many ways as we can, that we pro provide relief to, for, for many people across this country. That's why all taxpayers will be getting relief. But in particular, these students are aspiring to better themselves, to acquire skills in the areas so that they can have decent, well-paid jobs. They have aspirations like other Australians, and we're going to ensure we encourage them through fee-free TAFE and a tax cut. Could be called to the member for Hume. Hey, Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Treasurer. When, when did the Treasurer or his office instruct Treasury to undertake work on the legislated stage three tax cuts? Call to the Treasurer. Well, once again, Mr. Speaker, the Shadow Treasurer is a day late and a dollar short when it comes to these uh, questions. Uh, it is a matter of public record now uh, because of the uh, conversation at the committee chaired by uh, Senator Hume. Uh, that uh, in response to the Prime Minister and I making it very clear that we wanted more cost of living relief options, uh, we knew that in addition to the cost of living relief that was already flowing, we wanted to do something bigger and broader without putting extra pressure on inflation. We made that clear over the course of summer. The Prime Minister, I think on multiple occasions, he ran through them a moment ago, said that publicly. We indicated that privately as well. Uh, and uh, as the Treasury has made it clear, uh, on the 11th of December uh, they conveyed uh, to colleagues in the Treasury uh, that they thought that using the tax system would be an appropriate way to provide more cost of living relief to more people Order. without putting extra pressure on inflation. Uh, I think people know uh, that uh, we have been looking for more ways to provide more help to more people uh, over the course of the summer. And Remember it became increasingly clear to us in the lead up to the rejecting. Cabinet decision on the 23rd of January that the tax system had an important role to play there. And so my advice to the opposition is to stop searching around and lurching around for excuses to oppose bigger tax cuts for more people to deal with the cost of living. What we've been motivated by here is the pressure that people are under and actually doing something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Call to the honourable member for MacArthur. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Social Services. How will the Albanese Labor government's proposed tax cuts benefit workers in the community service sector? Give a call to the, the Minister for Social Services. 
Well, thank you, Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member for MacArthur for his question. Of course, the Albanese government's number one priority is supporting Australians faced with cost of living pressures. And on the 1st of July, Labor will deliver a tax cut for every Australian taxpayer to help with the cost of living. These tax cuts will make a real difference for the 13.6 million Australians that will get a tax cut. Now, our tax cut will deliver bigger benefit for more Australians. As, as the Treasurer says, they're good for middle Australia, good for helping with cost of living pressures, good for labour supply and good for the economy. Now, the member for MacArthur might be interested to know that there are 90,000 taxpayers in his electorate that will get a tax cut under Labor's plan. And in my portfolio of social services, government could not deliver the programs we do without the dedication of social and community service workers. They touch many lives every day, including those doing it tough. And I met some of these workers with the member for MacArthur last year when we visited Baptist Care in Campbelltown and saw the difference that these workers make in the lives of people they support. Now, I am pleased that our tax cuts mean these workers, along with every Australian taxpayer, will be able to take home more of what they earn under our government's plan. Yeah. Our tax cuts mean that a part-time disability support worker earning $40,000 will receive a tax cut of $654, keeping more money in their pocket. Yeah. This worker would have got nothing under the previous government's plan. A full-time social and community service worker earning $75,000 in the member of MacArthur's electorate will receive a tax cut of $1,554 under Labor's tax cut plan. This is double the tax cut which they would have got under the previous government. Now, our tax cut for community services workers builds on the substantial support the Albanese government is providing to the community sector organisations to help them deliver wage increases for their workers. Our tax cuts complement other cost of living relief that we've delivered through increased rent assistance, electricity bill relief, cheaper childcare, cheaper medicines and our boost to income support payments. Now, Mr Speaker, we know the opposition never wanted these tax cuts for low and middle Australia, just as they never wanted to boost income support Order. payments, just like they never wanted to provide energy relief. Well, while this Leader of the Opposition, full of neg negativity, has no positive plans for Australia, our government will get on with the job of helping Australians with cost of living relief. Yeah. Call to the Honourable Member for Goldstein. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Treasurer. Will the government consider implementing tax indexation to reduce the corrosive impact of bracket creep on hardworking Australians? Call to the Treasurer. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to the Member for Goldstein for her question. Uh, and can I also say thank you for the way that the Member has engaged with her community uh, about Labor's cost of living tax cuts for Middle Australia? And I think really in right across the crossbench. Uh, the way that parliamentary colleagues have engaged with this, with their own community and with the arguments for uh, our bigger tax cuts for more people to help with the cost of living, I think, has been a very good thing. And I wanted to thank the member for Goldstein as well uh, for the opportunity to engage with her about it uh, in the last day or so. Uh, when it comes to bracket creep, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, we do acknowledge uh, the impact that bracket creep has on ta take home pay. Uh, but what Order. the parliament also needs to acknowledge and recognise is that there is more than one way to return bracket creep to hard working Australians. Uh, there is the way that the member for Goldstein asks about. Uh, there is the way that was legislated uh, five years ago uh, by the previous government. Uh, and there is the way that this government is going about it. We acknowledge that there is a number of ways to go about it. We're not proposing to index the thresholds, as the member for Goldstein uh, is, uh, is suggesting, uh, but we have found, we think, a very effective way to return bracket creep to more people. And what the parliament needs to understand, I'm confident that the crossbench does, I know for a fact that our side of the parliament does, I'm not so sure that those opposite do, is that you can return bracket creep in a number of ways. It doesn't just have to be returned disproportionately to people who are already on the highest incomes. And what the Treasury advice makes really clear, the Treasury advice that we released at the same time we announced 
uh, our position and our policy is that what we are doing is we are returning bracket creep where bracket creep does the most damage, and that's through the middle incomes. And so one of the reasons why, one of the motivations for uh, the design of the tax package that we released uh, almost a couple of weeks ago is because as people on low and middle incomes, as their average tax rates uh, climb faster, as, they, as their incomes rise, uh, bracket creep does the most damage there. And so our responsibility and our objective is to return more bracket creep uh, to middle Australia. Uh, and that's why I think, uh, from memory, Mr Speaker, I think average tax rates go as a consequence of what we are proposing from 25.4 per cent to 23.9 per cent. Getting those average tax rates down is an indication that we're doing something about bracket creep, even if we're not doing it exactly the way that the member for Goldstein proposes. Give the call to the honourable member for Swan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Resources and Northern Australia. How will Labor's tax cuts benefit those living in Northern Australia and those in the resource sector? Give the call to the Minister for Resources and Northern Australia. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I thank uh, the member for Swan for her question and her ongoing support and enthusiasm for the resources sector and resources workers. Mr Speaker, on 1 July, Labor will deliver a tax cut for every Australian to deal with the cost of living. We are delivering a tax cut for everyone living in Northern Australia and for everyone working in the resources sector. There are a select few who have Order. invested and taken risks and created hundreds and thousands of jobs in the sector, and they have received great reward. But, Mr Speaker, the average income for resources workers right across this country is $144,000. They will get a tax cut of over $3,700. There is a wide range of salaries in the resources sector. CEOs get paid in the millions with salary and company stock options, but that is far from the case for most hardworking blue-collar workers in the resources sector. Across coal country in the Hunter to the iron ore mines in the Pilbara, there are trades assistants, haul pack drivers, diesel mechanics, heritage advisers, cleaners and cooks, Order. and they all earn between $75,000 and $95,000 a year, and each of them will get a tax cut Order. of between $1,500 and $2,000 a year. All of these resources workers and many more will receive bigger tax cuts under Labor's cost of living tax cut plans. Mr Speaker, those opposite don't really want to talk about the average resources workers, their rights, their conditions or their well-deserved tax cuts. They don't really want to talk about the truck drivers, the Order. mechanics, the cooks, the cleaners that make our minds run and keep the economy humming. I mean, they might like to jump in a private charter and go to a party in the Pilbara or maybe even Bali. Well, good on them, and that's, that's, that's really top stuff, I suppose. But what we care about are the workers in the resources industry Order. that will get a tax cut. Every single one of them will get a tax cut, and it will be bigger than they might have expected before. And then when I go to Northern Australia, every person living in Northern Australia will receive a bigger tax cut. They have received an average income of $70,000 across Northern Australia, and everyone earning on that average will get an average tax cut of $1,400. Only Labor supports the communities, all the communities across Northern Australia. We don't pick and choose who we support. This will be extra money in people's pockets, people who are doing it tough in Northern Australia where it is tough. There are more expensive items, lack of competition, transport issues which all add up to making the cost of living even more challenging for those in Northern Australia compared to the big cities. Labor's cost of living tax cuts will help everyone in Northern Australia and every single worker in the resources sector. Give a call to the member for Casey. My question is to the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister and other ministers committed to support the Stage 3 tax cuts in full on over 100 occasions. Order. For example, on 29 August 2022, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, Parliament made a decision to legislate these tax cuts and we made a decision that we would stand by that legislation. How can, the Australian, how can Australian families ever trust this government on taxes again after he repeatedly lied to them? The order the 
Member for Casey will withdraw that last part of the question, as that is unparlamentary. Withdraw or rephrase? Last bit or the whole? The last part of the question. So just withdraw? With, you just withdraw. Withdraw. Thank you, Member for Casey. Order. The Member for Bruce will cease interjecting. The Prime Minister has the call. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for Casey for his question. Order. Um, he should be pretty enthusiastic mm. yeah. about the government making the decision to look after low and middle income earners because in his electorate, 87 per cent of his electorate will get a bigger tax cut. Order. 87 per cent. Order. And everyone will get it. Every single one, 100%, will get a tax cut. 100%. Member for Casey has he asked, asked his a question. question about the government changing its position, and yes, we have, because economic circumstances have changed. But you've changed your position. You now say you are going to vote against the Morrison tax cuts. That's what you're going to do. Order. Or maybe, maybe you're going to go back to saying that you'll roll it back. I mean, you, you couldn't make this up, Mr. Speaker. They need to make up their mind. Order. You can either come in here, come in here, and Order say the you are deputy leader of the opposition. Order. There is far too much noise on my left. The member for Casey was heard in silence. Same courtesy is going to be shown to the Prime Minister, or people will just leave. The Prime Minister has the call. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. There are two options here. One is Truth. that order. <laughs> the the member for Fairfax will leave the chamber under 94A. Yeah. Order. The Prime Minister has the call. One is that uh, those, those opposite can say that the Morrison tax cut should be kept. They come in here, they vote against it, our changes, and they promise to roll it back. The second is that they agree with us that our package is better. If our package isn't better, why, why are they saying they're going to vote for it? Why are they saying they're going to vote for it? Mr Speaker, the member for Casey wasn't a part of the last circus that we've seen out there on Nemesis for the first couple of weeks. For the last couple of weeks. And Mr Speaker, some people asked me last night why, of all the Jack Nicholson movies I picked, the Shining. <laughs> well, it couldn't be a few, it couldn't be a few good men, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. It couldn't be a few good men. Order, the. And it order. certainly couldn't be terms of endearment, order, Mr. The Speaker. Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister will pause while the House comes to order. Order, order. The member for McNamara will cease interjecting. When the House comes to order. The member for Barker, I'm trying to hear from the member for Wannan. So you can assist me, be appreciated. The member for Wannan has the call. Goes to relevance. You can't handle the truth. Oh, and that's what seat. the quick. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. Wait. 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 Resume your seat and keep walking out of the chamber. <laughs> this order, this is question time, not the Academy Awards. <laughs> order. The Prime Minister has the call. It's going to be heard in silence. Changes are so bad they're going to vote for them, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Our changes are so bad. I mean, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Nemesis is like a reboot of Fight Club, except on Fight Club, no one could talk about it, but they can't talk about anything else but fighting themselves. Mr. Speaker, can't talk about anything else. 
The fact is they have no credibility, Mr Speaker. If they want credibility and defend their position, they need to do what the Deputy Leader of the Opposition did and, so, and roll back, Order. Roll back these Minister's changes. Prime time has concluded. Call to the Honourable Member for Aston. Thank you. My question is to the Minister for Health. Forty years on, why is it important to strengthen Medicare? And what is the Albanese Labor government doing to ensure that Medicare remains strong? Call to the Minister for Health and Aged Care. Oh, thank you, Speaker. And I thank the terrific member for Aston for that question. Mr Speaker, we're joined in the chamber today by a delegation of nurses here celebrating Primary Health Care Nurses Day. Yeah. Uh, nurses working in general practice, working in other primary care settings, and I welcome them to the chamber. There's about 75,000 primary care nurses in Australia, Mr Speaker, and under Labor, every single one of them will receive a tax cut on the 1st of July. The member for Aston also reminds us that this month we celebrate the 40th birthday of the most important social program in Australia, Medicare. Before that day, 40 years ago, one in seven Australians didn't have health coverage, and unpaid medical bills was the leading cause of personal bankruptcies in this country. But all of that changed overnight. And thanks to that landmark Labor reform, we now live in a country that has a health care system that is number one in the world when it comes to health outcomes and when it comes to equity. But, Mr Speaker, as I've said on many occasions, it is a system under pressure. I said yesterday bulk billing rates, particularly for visits to the GP, were in freefall when we came to government. That's why the Treasurer tripled the bulk billing incentive in last year's budget. That's not only stopped the slide in bulk billing rates in the first two months, we saw 360,000 additional free visits to the doctor, which I talked about a bit last week, Mr Speaker. But I wasn't the only one out last week talking about bulk billing. Surprisingly, the Leader of the Opposition also broke cover and, apparently with a straight face, said on Tasmanian radio this. He said, when I was Health Minister, bulk billing was at 84 per cent. They're well and truly below that now. Well, Mr Speaker, good on him for acknowledging the inheritance that his predecessor as Health Minister, the member for Sydney, left him. But perhaps he could have explained a little bit more clearly to those listeners in Tasmania what he did with those bulk billing rates. Order. Perhaps he could have reminded them. Order. The minister will, the minister will pause. The Minister for Pacific Island Affairs will cease objecting so I can hear from the Manager of Opposition Business. Well, Mr Speaker, on relevance, it was in fact a commendably tightly drafted question, no reference to alternative policies, and so there is absolutely no licence or basis for this minister, who is another serial offender, to be on the territory that he presently is on. The question contained what is the government to ensure it remains strong? I'm just going to make sure the minister and his answer remains relevant to that part of the question. does not invite an open compare and contrast, but he's entitled to describe why it needs to be strong. So he's got the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I was asked why it's important to strengthen Medicare, and the Leader of the Opposition himself pointed out the bulk billing rates have declined since he was Health Minister, but perhaps he could have reminded listeners that he said as Health Minister there were too many free Medicare services. Perhaps he could have reminded them he tried to abolish bulk billing altogether and introduce a fee for every single Australian every time they visited the doctor and then introduced a Medicare rebate freeze that lasted for six years and rip billions of dollars out of health care. Now, he might have not told the Order. listeners of Tasmania all of that, but I tell you this, Mr Speaker, Australia's doctors and nurses will never forget what this man did when Order. he was health the minister. Australia's patients won't forget it either. They know exactly what he'll do if he ever gets his hands on Medicare again. Yeah. Call to the honourable member for Hughes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Why did the Prime Minister say on 21 December, when asked about changes to the Stage 3 tax cuts, and I quote, we're not reconsidering that position, when the Treasury had already been instructed to undertake work that included changes to the Stage 3 tax cuts? The Prime Minister claimed his word is his bond. Isn't it now clear Australians can't trust a word he says? Call to the Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I assume that the member who asked the question is voting against our plan. That's right. I assume, because unless, unless she is 
uh, unless she is going to vote Order. against the plan that we have put forward, then what we have just seen is just all about wind. All about wind. All about Order. hypocrisy. Order, members on my left. Because we changed our position through a proper cabinet process. I know that those opposite don't recognise what a proper cabinet process might look like because they became, the longer they were in office, more and more dysfunctional. Order, the manager of they, allowed themselves, they allowed themselves to have a cabinet committee with one member on it. One member on it. They sat back and allowed, and the former Deputy Prime Minister has said that he was aware of uh, the former Prime Minister holding multiple portfolios. And Order. <laughs> the <laughs> Order. The member for Riverina will cease interjecting. The, the member for Riverina will cease interjecting. <laughs> The member for Hughes on a point of order. Uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. The question was quite clear. It went to the Prime Minister saying we're not reconsidering our position on the stage three tax cuts and asking why is it not clear that Australians cannot trust a word he says. That last part of the question is pretty broad in terms of the actual hook of the question. Um, so if you ask that part of the end of the question, the Prime Minister is probably going to go to defend himself or why that is, so, but I'll listen carefully to make sure he's being relevant. It's not just a three-minute... The, the, the Prime Minister has the call. And, and the whole premise of the question, the initial quote from the question, was completely inaccurate. If, uh, if the member for Hughes wants to uh, quote uh, Treasury officials, she should actually quote them, not just read things that are given, Order, given the member for uh, to her by those at the front. Because what we're seeing here is once again consistent with the denigration of public officials. What we have done is lift up, Order. Lift up the Order. public service. And I Order. have said, as I spoke about on the 7.30 report, as I spoke about Order. in other interviews on multiple occasions, I want a public service that comes up with ideas. Yeah. I want a public service that uses the fullness of its capacity, that's valued and respected and makes a contribution to public life in this country. Order. And that is what the, tre the Treasury official indicated uh, in the evidence that she gave uh, on Monday, because we value the public service, those opposite, Order. those opposite denigrate. Now, what we have done, what we have done, is have a change of position. We put it through our cabinet. I announced it at the National Press Club. Those opposite are yet to explain why it is. If that change of position was so bad, they have changed their position in order to vote for it. If they're fair income, they will have to not just vote against this plan, but roll it back as well, because we know that that is really what they want to do. Give the call to the honourable member for Karangamite. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Communications. What is the Albanese Labor government doing in the communications portfolio to support Australians with cost of living pressures, and what approaches have been rejected? Give the call to the Minister for Communications. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for her question and particularly acknowledge her tireless advocacy for the highest quality broadband for her constituents. In 2024, staying connected is an essential part of life, whether it's to keep in touch with loved ones, to log on for work, to study, or to engage with government. The communications sector supports us all to stay connected. But when it comes to covering the bills, we know that many Australians are doing it tough. That's why today the Albanese government announced that it will become mandatory for telcos to provide financial hardship assistance to all customers experiencing difficulties paying their phone and internet bills, including prioritising keeping customers connected. The new industry standard on financial hardship 
will also ensure that telco staff are appropriately trained and that systems are in place to proactively identify and support consumers who are experiencing financial hardship. The new rules will come into effect in March and will ensure telcos do all they can to avoid disconnecting Australians who might be struggling with cost of living pressures. These rules are the result of a direction given to the regulator by the government, and we acknowledge the industry for its engagement with this process. Mr Speaker, we're also delivering cost of living relief to Australian families who do not currently have an internet connection at home, which we know is so essential today for all school students. The School Student Broadband Initiative has now been extended for another two years beyond our initial 12-month commitment. Yeah. We know how important it is for every child to have access to the internet beyond the school gate. Today, more than 6,500 disadvantaged families without broadband at home previously have now been connected to free internet and over 40 per cent of those families are in our regions. Any Australian family can contact the National Referral Centre on 1800 954 610 to check their eligibility and get assistance to set up their free connection. Importantly, Mr Speaker, the workers who deliver these critical communication services will also benefit from Labor's new tax cuts. A telco technician earning $100,000 will benefit from around $2,179 in tax cuts, nearly double what they would otherwise have received. The postie or the transport worker delivering your parcels, earning $70,000, will receive $1,429 in their pocket under Labor's plan. These are the workers who deliver for Australia, and they deserve to keep more of what they earn. This government is here to make a difference, and our measures across the communications portfolio are doing just that. Call to the Prime Minister. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I ask for the questions to be placed on the notice paper. <laughs>